Hey YouTube, it's Turak Master, and um, this video is a little bit late in uh, for when it should have probably been out there, but I'm gonna kind of do a top 15 uh, Kaijudo cards countdown as we kind of approach the end of the Dojo Edition era into the base set, which has a lot of good cards to look forward to. So I wanted to cover this for people who are currently in the game that might want to know what to look out for if they don't already know um, some of the best cards that are in the game and maybe my reasoning behind some of this stuff and for people that want to get into the game but are waiting for it to hit Walmart and Target they have a decent understanding of what some of the best cards are and this is also for people out there who play the game but are kind of lost as to what deck to build and um, I think if you analyze the top cards in the game, you can kind of decide what two or three colors to play in your deck, and um, the pros and cons of playing that deck. So, without further ado, we get into it. Um, so, 15th best card, in my opinion, is Star Lantern. So, it's a really good blocker because when it blocks, it taps another enemy creature as well, so that's great. Uh, if they try attacking just to win the game, they've got to have even more creatures on you, or they have to kill this as opposed to a bigger blocker that could kill their creature and you might survive. Um, it's really good, but the drawback is it only has 3,000 power, and um, not the greatest power. So, it will die most of the time when you block with it. That's just part of the deal. But early game, it can really shut people down. And late game, if you're blocking mass numbers of creatures in a kind of a, a battle to the finish, blocking battle or whatever, um, this is really going to help you out. So, card number 14, Spectre Claw. So, Spectre Claw... Shield Blast, although the Shield Blast part almost never plays much of a role. It can, but typically it doesn't. Um, mostly what it's for is the fact that it only costs 2 to play, and it discards a card from your opponent's hand. It's great. Uh, early game, you can start dropping these. Turn 2, turn 3, turn 4, you can drop a Fumes or something. And they're down 3 cards there, if you can do that. If not, it's good for late game, when your opponent has maybe two or three cards in their hand, you drop two of these or drop a fumes with it, and it's really good because it's just dropping one card early game can kill off your opponent's hand, and what makes it really good is the two cost, as I said, because you can drop this really in combination with almost anything late game. Um, you'll be drop, you could drop this and a Zagon so that the opponent loses their card in hand that they were saving to try to do something with it, say Terror Pit, to try to kill off Zagon because they thought it was coming. There you go. There's good, uh, a really good use for it. But at the same time, it can be dead, and it isn't always as effective as it needs to be because you don't always have enough discard power at once. So that is a problem for it. Um, another... Uh, getting into the next one, it's yet another civilization here. Uh, we've got Reef, Pl uh, Reef Prince Glurgle, um, and he is pretty good except for the 2000 power. Um, he's cost 5, which is a little bit high, but at the same time, his ability is great. Um, I, d I don't typically get this off turn 5 because I'm making another play. Uh, because a lot of times in my decks at turn 5, I'm it, depending on the deck I'm playing, if this is in it, I'm probably just already at 6 and dropping as a gone or something of the sort. Depending on which deck I'm playing, it could be something like Grand Gur. So, a lot of times I skip over turn 5. I go straight to basically what would be turn 6 because of mana acceleration, which is why a lot of times he's for after I've gotten field control or established um, having a finisher out there before my opponent. A lot of times he's for that. So, um, 
he's pretty good to have because the top four cards of your deck that's searching pretty deep and um, gives you what you need and you know why and you know what you need instead of say one card out of the the top of your deck so the 2000 power does make him kind of useless afterwards he's just one more creature to maybe get past blockers for the final swing he doesn't typically get to attack because of the fact that he comes out so late so um number 12 in my countdown is Zagan because he is still pretty much the earliest double breaker we have I know we have one that's earlier than him and um, that would be what splinter claw wasp I want to say is the name um, and that thing has a base of 3000 power and it only comes out one turn earlier and as I said it's, especially if you're running nature you pretty much skip turn five let's be honest so you could go straight to something with level six and that would be Zagon so he comes out 7,000 power at turn 6, uh, double breaker. That's pretty much all he is, but then again, he gets past every blocker but two currently in this game. Uh, those being Grand Gur and uh, King Tsunami. And hardly anyone uses King Tsunami, and if they do, they're not going to have it out at the same time as you have Zagan out, seeing as he costs 9. So, Zagan gets past pretty much everything and forces your opponent into playing their Terror Pit or Root Trap or... Or whatever it is they play. They might have Spiral Gate in there. Depends. Uh, and that's basically what he's going to do. Is just be your big finisher. And he's still the best early game finisher. That we have so far. There are plenty of late game finishers. That outdo him. But that's for now. That's what we've got for early game finishers. Um, my early game answer to that. Comes in at number 11 from Light, the Light Civilization, currently my favorite civilization, because I was a big, big into Light back in uh, the regular Duel Masters. So, Grand Gur is just amazing for a blocker. He costs 6 to play with 9,000 power. Uh, he can also attack enemy creatures, so you block once, then you attack into another creature. Um, a lot of times I do like to attack with blockers instead of waiting to block because if they have something they can always just you know use it and kill your blocker so it's better to if you can to attack most of the time because either way it's not going to stop anything from changing in how many attacks they can get through so most of the time it is better to, to attack but it's obviously better to block first and then attack instead of just let it hit and then attack, unless you have five shields, at which point go ahead and do what you want. So, this card is really good, and against light decks you really gotta watch out for it. So, coming in at number 10 is Razor Kinder. Um, his 4000 power is nothing impressive, but it does get him past um, Rock Bite. So any fire decks running Rock Bite have to forget about that. Since he's level 7, he can't be killed by the level 4 or lower kill stuff. And one effect, one thing he does have going for him, I guess, is he can get past Bat Breath Scared Horrible by attacking it for suicide. Um, I guess that works, but his real, his real upside is basically you're getting a Death Smoke for 2 more, but you're also getting 4,000 power out of it, which is just really good. It's like death smoking and playing a creature at the same time, but the creature comes out with 4,000 power for the cost of 2 mana. So, I mean, it's hard to say anything else about it. it. That's just really good. Kills off a creature. A lot of times you can hit your opponent's finisher too, because they'll play something, depending on who went first, and then, say they play Zagon, you can return with a Razor Kinder. Now, coming in at number 9, I've got Bolt Tail Dragon, because... Uh, for 8, you get a 7,000 fast attack double breaker. Um, arguably the best finisher in the game at this point because of his um, fast attack ability. And he's got the 7,000 power. He comes out fairly fast in any deck that plays him. Probably a turn later than Zagon would. And he's a fast attack. So later game, he's really good. And 
he can't be killed off by things like death smoke and whatnot because of his um his fast attack if you just attack with him the only problem you might encounter are blockers like grandgur um but at this point whatever you get a free attack out of him before your opponent gets the chance to death smoke or razor kinder and if they have a something like terror pit it's still going to hit after you get one attack off of it. And it's just, if your opponent has zero shields, and you're tied blockers and creatures, all you have to do is drop something like this, and there you go. So, um, I believe we're on number seven now. Or is it eight? No, yeah, we're on eight. So, um, got Hydro Spy in here ahead of Reef Prince, only because of the fact that he can come out turn 4, which is just easier. Later game, when you're sitting on your pretty much ideal 8 mana, unless you have 9 mana uh, for a deck that might play something that costs 9, um, you're basically going to stop adding mana at 8 in most decks. So Hydro Spy comes out in combination with something else you can play for cost of 4. And it's a 1,000 body and replenishes itself in your hand, which is really good. But the 1,000 body is just there as something that can attack and can be used as a creature. Um, but honestly, it's only in here because of the, the fact that draw power is really good in any game. So having that draw power really helps. Now, on to Fumes who is now number 7. Um, really good card. Uh, he has 2,000 for his body instead of 1,000, like a lot of the people that come out as a cost 4 and have an ability like this. He just discards and makes your opponent discard a card from their hand, which is really useful, because if you think about it, you're just dropping stuff that makes your opponent discard and getting a creature, it's like forcing them to choose, do I want to have a blocker to stop them from hitting me every turn? Or do I want to have this control? Do I want to have my finisher for later? Um, it's just, a lot of times, unless they have water, it's really going to hurt them. And if you can catch them early enough, if they do have water, you can still hit them hard before they start drawing by forcing them to discard their Hydro Spy or whatever it is that lets them draw. Because... They're not going to be able to have as much ability to draw early game unless they use Logo Scan before you can do this. Which is why you use this in combination with Spectre Claw most of the time. Next up at number 6 is Bronze Arm Tribe. He's really, really good because he's turn 4 mana acceleration, which... Is just he's probably the best mana acceleration card at this point um, and he comes out with 1000 power yet another thing to just try to pressure the opponent uh, because you have your mana acceleration which is basically the point of him but then again you've also got a creature to do some damage with um, granted I would have liked to have had him at level 3 like before but you can't really complain, that's how the game runs now. Um, I just really miss the level 3, because it was more fun that way. <laughs> but I can see why they needed to do it, because even at 4, he's still very, very good. Just imagine him back down at 3 again. Um, so, into the top 5, we've got Logo Scan. Um, for the cost of 3, you get to draw 2 cards. So it's a plus 1 right there, and it's turn 3. Late game, you can drop this in combination with something like Zagon if you have that ninth mana, which a lot of times you'll know you're going to drop this and think, well, I might want to drop a Zagon after this, just using Zagon as an example. Uh, water and Darkness being paired up a lot in control decks. Um, so you could drop those two at the same time. If you're facing a nature deck, <laughs> forget about it. They've probably added mana to you. Uh, from your field, so you can probably drop this and a level 7 or a level 8, like Bolt Tail, or, or whatever else it is that you want to play, and it's just really going to help you out a lot, especially early game, when people are trying to hit you with discard power, you get one of these off turn 3, there you go. 
Uh, number four in the countdown, the last light card, Alcadius, from my playmat. <laughs> Except this one's not evil, this one is. Um, so, the thing with Alcadius is that his power is kind of low, but especially coming out in base set, he's going to get even better. Um, you can use him in combination with a lot of things, but as, once base set comes out, he's just going to get a lot, more, a lot more stuff to be used with. Um, he can just untap any of your creatures that's level 5 or lower after he's done attacking. So actually when he attacks, not when he's done attacking, that would make a difference. Um, his 6,000 power isn't the greatest, but a lot of times he can swing to double break. And um, if basically if you've got two of these and one level 5 or lower creature, uh, you can win. Like right there, if they can't stop you from doing anything with their shields or blockers or something, you can win right there. Um, it's just really good, because he just does so much damage to the opponent <laughs> through his... The fact that he can kill off their little creatures and then untap someone else. So basically, with two creatures, you can kill four. Um, it's really impressive. Well, three, my bad. Um, you can kill four shields with two creatures, and one of them's not a double breaker. So that's the really impressive thing about him, is, is how well he can handle situations and just untap everything. So you can kill something with one of your light blockers because they're all skirmishers and then untap it when you attack with this guy. So it leaves your blocking power intact but it also lets you control their creatures. Um, a lot of times I've had to do that in decks and that's why he makes it into even my chaos deck out deck which doesn't actually try to attack for the win. Uh, coming in at number 3 in the game, we've got Heal of Flame, the Assaulter. Uh, at turn 4, 5,000 power is good no matter what. And not to mention he's a fast attack creature, so he can come in, just attack something, and then at the end of the turn he returns to your hand. Uh, which is crazy because the opponent has almost no way to kill it unless they have a blocker. And most of the time you just control the blockers on out of there anyway. So he's just tremendous pressure. And then that also leaves your hand size intact so that later, if you need to, you can drop him into the mana zone if he's no longer worth having. So, amazing, amazing card. It's caused me so much pain in the past. Um, its main weakness is light because they actually have stuff to get around it, but the rest of the civilizations struggle with him a lot. Um, coming in at number two, I've put Root Trap in here at number two. I didn't want to, but I kind of thought I had to. Root Trap is nature's version of Terror Pit, and Root Trap just, it might send the creature back to the mana, but at the same time, it's still removal, and late game when you're playing it, probably not going to hurt you. If it gets hit in a shield, it's still a free removal of a creature. You can use it or you can not use it, it's up to you, but most of the time you'll still probably choose to use it. Uh, it's very good to have, and I recommend playing it in your deck if your deck uses nature even if it's only at one just to add that whatever fourth terror pit if you're using darkness in combination uh, it's just great removal and i was thinking about at this spot putting in terror dragon regarion doom instead because he does the same thing but comes out with a 9000 attack the only thing is this is a shield trigger and it's used more frequently regarion doom as good as he is costs nine and he does have use, but it's not as much as Terror uh, Root Trap does, so, I mean, I had to. Um, there are a lot of, a lot of really good cards that couldn't make it into my top 15, and it was really hard choosing these. Obviously, number one for me is Terror Pit. If I had Root Trap at number two, and Terror Pit hadn't been in there, um, I couldn't get around putting Root Trap anywhere else, or Terror Pit anywhere else. Uh, it's just banish target enemy creature. It's a shield blast. It's great. Um, anyone that knows the game would tell you that if you use a darkness deck and it's not in there, you're probably a scrub. And I would probably agree with few exceptions, such as decks that have different ideas that they go for, such as decks that never even see seven mana at once. Um, that would be different. Other other such ideas that are a lot different, but if you're running any mainstream kind of control deck or anything, 
this is still worth throwing in at three always um, so I mean I can't really go into too much depth on Terrapit it's just the best control card at this point and will continue to be one of the best for probably the entirety of the game so until base set uh, this is it my top 15 Kaijudo cards and um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any other cards that you would like to have seen in here that you thought I'd misplaced or whatever, um, feel free to comment on that. But I think I did a fairly good job on this. Took me a little while to figure this out. And um, I just wanted to do this before we got into the base set because it might help people out uh, that want to get into this game now or even at the start of base set, these are still good cards to look out for. Um, I will do one of these in base set too, uh, most likely a lot earlier on. So I was just caught up with a lot of testing decks and all that kind of thing, which I will be doing next time, and I probably won't get the review out for a week or two after base set because I need to test things, but um, I hope you guys don't mind the wait, and sorry this video is kind of long. But it is a top 15. It kind of takes a little while to go through that. Um, and thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, leave your comments and ratings and whatever you want to put. I'm not asking for ratings. Just if you liked it and thought I did a good job, go ahead and drop it a like if you want. Um, my videos don't get too many, so I'd, it's not really going to make much of a difference if you do or not. So, I'm not saying don't, but... You get the point, I don't, I'm not begging. <laughs> so thanks for watching guys, and have a nice day.